Okay, welcome back. Now we're setting up the rotor head and a couple things to show you before I move the camera around here. I'm still in setup point G on the fly barless and I still have one of the lights on. That means the swash plate is still in level mode. If I pan around here, I currently have an RC logger pitch gauge sitting on top of the motor and zeroed out. So that is your zero reference point on this helicopter. If the, if the blades are going to be essentially zeroed to what the top of the motor is, that gives you a, a good reference. i um, going to bring this around to the back of the helicopter. I'm going to bring that RC logger pitch gauge around. Put the blade directly over the tail boom. And if we look here, I've got about one degree of positive pitch at this point. What that's going to require me to do is to lower this blade approximately one degree. So I can do that by tightening up, turning in the ball wink on this side. I'm going to come in approximately one turn. Uh, one turn is usually about one degree on this particular head setup. If I come back around again, I'm showing a point two degrees at this point, uh, which is very workable. Okay, this is a big 700X sitting on a 32 inch workbench, so we're going to pull this pitch gauge off. I'm going to make a note for, for where things are sitting, and I'm going to have to back the helicopter up, turn the rotor around, and get the helicopter back in the same orientation on the bench that I started with. Approximately the right place over my T-Rex logo here, and I'm going to check this other rotor blade. At this point I'm showing about a positive 0.9, so once again I have to do the same thing. We're going to shorten the, let me get the right link here, we've got to shorten the grip link. Come in one turn. Get the blades straightened back out where they belong. And we're at a positive 0.4 right now, which is close enough. I look to be less than a half a degree off. If I turn this another turn, I'm going to wind up being either a, a positive 1 or, a, or just slightly under 0. As long as I'm, one blade was at 0.2, this blade was at 0.4, that's in very good shape. You should see no tracking difficulties in the air at all. So that really sets, we've used point G, come all, all the way back around here again. We've used point G on the B-Stex to set the initial swash plate level. And we've also stayed in that mode, assembled the rotor head, and we've used it to level the blades. So now the blades should track real well in flight. We're going to move on to the rest of the, uh, the setup here. If I go from point G to point H, H on our setup card is swash plate mixing type. I've got a red light. Red light is swash plate mixing type is 120 degree swash, which this uh, T-Rex 700X is. Um, next thing we want to do is step I, which is swash plate servo directions. This just makes sure that when I move collective, everything moves in the same direction. If it was wrong, if I come in here and I bump the rudder stick, you're going to see what it looks like when things are wrong. As I move the rudder stick around um, and use collective, I step through the four different modes until I get one that gives me correct direction. So at this point, positive cyclic, I'm sorry, positive collective gives me upward swash movement, negative gives me uh, downward swash movement. If this is backwards, if uh, positive and negative collective is wrong, that is something you need to reverse in your transmitter not here in the B-Stack. So as long as all the servos are moving in the right direction for collective, uh, we're good at this point. Okay, next step we're going to do swash plate servo throw. And here we've got to come back around to the back of the helicopter again and take, an eye, take a good look at the pitch gauge because what we're going to have to do is slowly use the aileron stick until we reach um, approximately six degrees. Align is look, or the B-Stex is looking for six degrees. 
Um, I got 6.2 here, which is very close. If I come around the front, I've got a blue light here on the B-Stex, which is correct. So that means I've got the correct amount of initial cyclic throw on here, and we can work from there. Okay, now we're going to come back here and look at the pitch gauge again, because the next step is going to be setting collective throw. So make sure your pitch curve is set to completely flat. Sorry, we're going to come back here and bump this into the next mode. All right, so I'm going to initially set my uh, full negative pitch. My stick is down. I've got negative 12.2. If I use the aileron stick to bump it around, I am going to look for somewhere around 13.5. That's my own personal preference. I got 13.3. I give the aileron stick a little bump. 13.6. Sorry, I'm jumping all over the place here. 13.5. Now I go to full positive. I want to get this to approximately the same. 13.5. Okay, so I've set my collective throw in step K. Now I'm going to bring your camera back around here again and we're going to go to the next step. This is to establish our cyclic limit. What we're looking for here is to make sure that the swash plate and the servos don't bind up at full positive and full negative. What I've found as a very good starting point is I bump the rudder stick until the light turns red, the status light goes red, and then I just bump it carefully until I get back to where it just turned blue. This to me gives the best agility feel. The helicopter rotate, it flips and rolls very, very well. Um, and you're not really pushing the, the limits of, of cyclic travel. So right here at full negative, I got full cyclic throw, full positive, same thing. Last point we're going to check here is going to be step M. M is your swash plate gyro direction. This is the single most important thing you're going to do on the helicopter. If, if you've worked on older helicopters and had the tail gyro set wrong, this is exactly the same concept. What we want to look for here is when we push the helicopter in one direction, the swash plate moves the opposite. So if I shove the helicopter right, the swash plate tips left. If I tip the helicopter nose down, the swash plate moves aft. What we've got to make sure is, is it's correct. If I bump the rudder stick to throw it off here, now when I move the helicopter right, notice the swash plate is going right. This is incorrect. So I'll bring that around. Other things. Now I've knocked it out of whack again, and we've got as I go forward, the cyclic is going, the, the swash plate is going forward. So I'll come back around to the right settings. Left forward. Essentially the swash plate has to move opposite of what we're doing or as soon as the helicopter gets light on the skids it's going to tip over. Okay this really finishes at this point um, the setup of the b the way I'm using it right now. Since I'm using an external receiver setup I can't set up the governor mode that uh, requires either SBUS or SRXL single line and for now I am going to use the governor on the aligned speed control so I'm not really concerned but this takes to set up here if I exit out the last part of my setup let's see if we can get around to the the right orientation here we're gonna have to shift the helicopter around just a little bit move the rotor head a bit now I just want to make sure that my radio settings match the helicopter so positive collective is giving me um, positive blade travel and, pos and, and vertical swash movement going, going up. Negative collective is bringing the swash back down. Right cyclic is rotating the swash plate to the right. And if I pull back stick or back cyclic, it's pulling the swash plate to the rear. Any, anything wrong here requires you to make changes in the transmitter, not the B-Stex. The B-Stex is concerned with making sure that when you move the swash plate, uh, it counters the direction. The actual settings of how things move are done with the radio itself. So that really completes the setup menu for the B-Stex for using an external governor at this point. And we will come back and do some more configuration after that.